no place like my art studio. There's no place like my art studio. There's no place like my art studio. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to be going to Oz and painting the ruby slippers. So we gotta follow our path and recognize what monkeys belong to us and what monkeys don't. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hey. Hi, you guys. That strange voice has a very important job. He is much like the wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's kind that. of thematic. <laughs> we do it every day, but today it's on theme. But what he really does is he controls the horizontal and the vertical. He follows me around with our cameras. We have robotic cameras he puts in our picture-in-picture -picture so that you can stay really on track during the painting and not feel lost in the project. I know when I've painted along with some of my art friends, I, I, it's, you know... I needed a reference. Yeah. So that's something that we've got here. I, I also have I a traceable. In the description below, you will see uh, information of art materials, alternatives that you can use, and links to a traceable. You can also always find that stuff on theartsherpa.com. Yeah. And Anytime. I think if you will take... <gasps> I think breathing in a deep breath. Is this what we're going to be painting today? This is what we're doing. So I can move my reference over can here. You put that reference over there? We have some interesting materials today. Today I'm going to be sporting some Recollections glitter. I have it in, um, it's in the description, but I have cherry and I have bling. Uh, for those of you that love nail logical, yes, it is hollow. <laughs> 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 of course it's hollow. Um, soft body gel to apply it. And for sure, for sure, a glazing medium. I'm going to be using my acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is the longest name on the market. But I'm going to forgive them that because it's two products in one. It's both a glaze and it's also a retarder. So you guys know I love the Grumbacher retarder. Mm -hmm. And I have glazing liquids that I like. But this is like all of them into one happy little jar. Of, I don't have to get two things out of my art. A, a happy caboodle. little jar. Of, happy I don't little have jar. to get two things. Two things in this happy little <laughs> jar. Not sponsored. Just telling you. Because you guys will be like, how would you get that effect? I'll be like, this. Totally not messing with you. I'm not trying to look all cool <laughs> we got the 16 by 20 canvas i started to lay it in today just so that i don't get lost in the drawing processes sometimes when you're teaching and talking and drawing things can go weird and, oh, you, we have a huge crowd out here today there's so many of our friends out here today coming to hanging out with us it's pretty just breathe awesome it out. yeah I just to, breathe it out holidays I, and an election year, we are, let's just, you know, hold your binkies, <laughs> hold on to your soft, cuddly friends, just, just get your little life raft, whatever it is, and just hold on, we're going to make it through to the new year, I promise we are, we're going to have so much creativity between now and then, you guys aren't even going to hardly notice any of the stress, and we're going to remember to breathe. breathe. We have some wishes today. Do we? To add to the canvas. I'm adding my wishes with this watercolor pencil into my yellow brick road. And the first one that I want to put out there is to Mona, mm. who has had a loss of a family member and her dad had an accident. He's okay. Yep. He's all right. There's definitely angels, but he's got also a minor surgery. So we're just going to send angels of love and protection around Mona because she's just got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And we definitely always want to take care. And a happy birthday to Miss Donna. Yes, she's in channel here with us celebrating big art hugs to both Donna and Mona. I know you guys are both needing those for different but relative reasons. So, And we had a special family shout out to Jen's family for mm -hmm. Little Brushes, Hunter, and I sent you the text. Oh, you sent me the text. Sorry. <laughs> I was reading my other note center. So, you Skype. Made... Oh, Skype. Okay. <laughs> that was Skype. We're going to do that uh, shout out again in just two seconds. Oh, Little Brushes uh, Hunter and Anna. Anna. There it is. Sorry, there we go. Multiple Hunt, notes. They went as the Wizard of Oz for Halloween, and they're going to be painting along. So, Hunter and Anna, I hope you have a great time. And, of course, I know Wyatt is with us mm -hmm. today and Millie and probably Brooke and other Little Brushes and Geeky. Oh, oh, yeah, and we Emma have, we and have Crafty Twins. We have a lot of Little Brushes, too. This It's whole family kind of paint. Are we ready to, do we have any other wishes we'd we like to throw in the right, canvas besides let us all survive today? Real quick for, for Erica. Erica. Um, wishes for, for her family and her grandfather passed away yesterday. So I'm going to stay over there. I uh, wanted to make sure that you know we got uh, sent some wishes over there for, for her. And uh, Mo Cuts wishes for Colleen to be reunited with her granddaughter. 
and uh, Aaron for a toothache. And we ha you know, there's a there's you know, lots of wishes for stress management as well. So what I'll say is all of our light keepers and and our and our community out there, if you're seeing any of those wishes that we can't quite get to here, can't capture all of them on our community today, there's just a lot of them coming in. So please grab those and put them on your community. We really appreciate you helping us with that. And it, you know, it just goes to help share the love, doesn't it? It does. It really goes to help share love. I'm going to sketch this in real quick with the darker pencil that you guys can see. Um, but listen, tracing is okay. That's not cheating. It is literally just an art skill. Just um, And actually, when we do perspective this week, I'm going to show, show you how it's even kind of an engineering skill. Mm. So if you've been one of those mathematical engineering people who thought you couldn't draw, you're about to realize, no, I can. In fact, I'm the best at it. So <laughs> it's going to be an exciting week. I'm going to use my little inexpensive $1.50 T-square. <laughs> maybe it's square, maybe it's not. Just to give you guys some guideline measurements. On her skirt, oh, we'll say about five inches this side and about, oh, even five inches. Just about the same on either side. And coming down here to the long point is eight inches. So I've got this little skirt space and I'm going to just try to make a smile. Her skirt is like a little smile, Miss Dorothy Gale's skirt. She sets forth on an adventure. She didn't really want to go on an adventure. She wasn't sure. She wasn't feeling brave. And then, you know, nature took her on one, <laughs> like nature will do. In the center of the skirt, I like to anchor my first foot. And one of the tricks I'm going to tell you about the feet is, and I did a little more of a layer on this one because I think it looks a little better, is that you have one foot a little bit lower than this one that stepped behind it. They wouldn't be on the same line. This is a small amount of perspective, but it's a neat touch. And if I can get my T-square to behave, I can show you my trick to this. I get a line where my foot ends and the measurement on that line from the bottom is an inch and a half. So an inch and a half from the bottom. Once I have that, I'll come up about a quarter inch above that line and make the second line. This lets me set my heels. This is one of my tricks. People are like, how do you get your heels? I get those lines in first because the flat of the foot will have to line up on the line and if I use my T-square it's very helpful in me getting that line. And then I'm going to say this one here on my 16 by 20 canvas. T-square is great. I'm being comical. To, this is on purpose. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't awkwardness. This is purposeful comic comedy. Mm-hmm. 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 So you, you guys believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere I have a pipe organ that needs this to be This is playing. four and a half inches up, and I'm going to make this line... You can take it all the way across, even though you're going to sketch your feet over it. Oh, about four inches from this side. This is going to set my road. Mm. This gives me some proportions, some space. So that when I'm sketching my leg down, some things I need. I'm going to need my ankles to line up about the same space. I'm going to need my heels to line up about the same space. Because we don't have one leg shorter than the other. Mm. Right? So I bring my front leg down kind of a curve here. I arc out the foot and then when I come down to the toe I've got my line to join into. It really creates an easy easy space for me. Curve in for my ankle. She's got nice ankles. Round out for heel because you realize she's got a heel right there. Curve in for the slightly fashionable shoe that Lady Gaga would like. And then we've got to make the heel and then the arch to the shoe. And it actually makes it, we'll come down, we'll build, we'll be little cobblers and build a little other hair. We're going to add a bow later. Now she's got socks. Now are you using just a regular green pencil there? I am using watercolor pencil. Thank you sweetheart for asking me. Watercolor pencil. Why are you using watercolor pencil? Because the watercolor pencil is water soluble so as I paint it it will blend in. I wouldn't use green if I were you guys. I would use pastel pencils or chalk pencils or watercolor pencils that are similar to the color you're going to be painting over them so they disappear into the paint. Ah. Yeah. Now. I'm going to be adding the second leg. It's going to peek out a little bit. 
I've curved that little bone down. I like to add a little curvature, mm -hmm. a little sassiness to my drawings. <laughs> Y'all might have noticed I have a theme of like, these shoes are made for walking. <laughs> if you've been painting with me a while, <laughs> you've seen some stylish shoes. There's been some discussions about, would she really go into the woods with those heels? Yes, she would. <laughs> yes, she would. She is torqued. <laughs> I'm going to bring my little heel space out, right? See how those kind of line up? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it perfect. And there's some perspective tricks to do that. But today we're just sketching these in or tracing these in, putting in our little ankle socks. Now my trick to the road is that once I have this, all I've got to do is come up and make a little candy cane swirl here. My little candy cane swirl. We'll come around the outside, make so, another little candy cane swirl, and I'm going to be sure and show a little curve on my, on my road here. So Tira was asking. Hi, Tira. If you don't, I'm not sippy sippy from Hedwig today. Oh, good. So I can give a shout out here too. If All you, right, we sketched it in. Did we do that? Yes, we did. Did we fast forward it through it? No, we didn't. Because <laughs> I want you guys to be able to draw it at home, which is why we don't speed paint. Yep. Even though I am fast. And some people feel like a, a speed talk, speed paint, but it's real time for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so Tara asks, if you don't have a watercolor pencil or chalk, um, she does have sidewalk chalk. Um, yes, bonus. Would, it, would a regular number two pencil work if I sketch it in really lightly? If you sketch it in really lightly, the issue with graphite is that, and I'll demo this on something sometime, but basically the graphite it bleeds or seeps through the paint and oh gosh especially through white paint i mean even with or golden yellow paint, like huh yellows yellows oh so it can gray it it can bleed through in if you're if you're if you want that effect i actually have some art up front where i intentionally use pencil mm -hmm. so it bled through the painting and you kind of feel the sketch underneath but if you didn't want that if you weren't looking for that that's really upsetting yeah and my whole thing is I just try to avoid you guys having as many upsetting art experiences as possible. That's why I always tell you what I'm using and why I'm using it. Never because I want you to change paint or any of that, but because I just want you to know why I'm getting a result. Yeah. That's all. And, I'll, and I have a magic hat. <laughs> That's not really true, but I feel it. Now, this is an interesting thing. Um, you might be inclined because it's just a check, a gingham check over the skirt, to leave this white. To but guess it? what? What? You won't be. Why not? Why not? Because it's not actually going to be underpainted completely white. Hmm. Now, you guys may not be aware of this, but there's a fantastic designer named Mackenzie and Childs. Oh, yes. Mackenzie and Childs were a design team out of the East Coast famous for a particular look of furniture, which is like my, mo my most favorite in the universe. Can't afford a stick of it. <laughs> Not a stick of it. Um, but that's why it's good to be an artist, because you can paint things yourself. But they would do something called a courtly check, and they made sure one of the things that made their check not seem like crazy checkerboard, more Neiman Marcus price checkerboard, mm -hmm. is that it wasn't perfectly white. And I learned a lesson from that which is that you don't want just always a stark white. Sometimes you want some wealth to what you have visually. So interestingly enough, I'm going to come over with my number 10 bright. I'm going to, if you're brand new to painting, dip your brush in water and scrape it off. Now my bristles are stiff, which means that they don't bend that easily, right? They're not super soft. Like you don't feel like rubbing them all over your face like some lovely brushes. You will feel like doing that. And if you touch it, it'll be damp, but not soaking wet. If your brush is soaking wet, if you have a brush that tends to hold more water, yeah. be sure to take the extra step of toweling it off. To towel it off? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just going to be putting puddles of water into your paint and having a hot mess and having no idea why. Mm. So I didn't need to towel. I want a little more moisture than I just pulled out. So I'm going to pull a corner out. See right there in my brush? Yeah. Pulling a corner, I'm going to get some white, and now I'm going to use the delicious glazing medium that I have. Ooh. Now this keeps my paint from drying out too quickly, and also uh, helps me blend. It extends my paint. Now I'm going to have to work my little edge here because I got green. You won't have green. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. I'll have green, but I have a plan for that, so I'm okay. 
Now I'm going to see if I can uh, adjust the, some of the cameras a little bit because whenever we do that first white, it's so it's, hard for the camera to see what I'm doing. I have all this like. Oh, there it goes. See, once you get any color on there, it just yeah. Once well, it's, it's there, it's just very soft. It's just barely in there. Yeah, and, and that first coat of paint when it goes on there, it's real easy for the cameras to wash them out. However, that's one of the things that you know when you are an experienced painter, you know to paint. The canvas you wouldn't leave the white yeah you would definitely definitely treat and consider all of the canvas unless you had a very good artistic reason like you know Mondrian or somebody to not do it and if you're in the Museum of Modern Art you already know all this and are probably not watching my YouTube show <laughs> <laughs> unless you were just feeling like having a little relax from the from the heavy, heavy art scene, <laughs> see what I can seeing do someone again. enjoy painting. I am just loving this. Notice that I'm also curving, continuing the smile of her skirt with my brush stroke, aren't I? See, that's implying a directionality, right? All the way up, smaller and smaller little circles. Yes, it's really white. You may only be able to see the direction of my brush stroke and not as much the paint. And that's what you want on your canvas too. You're like, well, I just painted it white, white again with little bits of slightly yellow parchment -y color streaks. But it's what you want and it will make a difference. It's the kind of thing um, people will be like, well, I don't know why I didn't want anything in that show. These little touches or those little extra bits that take your painting further, help you be a bigger world builder. So once I get that, I'm going to rinse out my brush, kind of swirl it around in the water, push it down, make sure I get all the paint out, like you do, all right, dragging it off here, pushing it down, all right, I'm going to paint in my yellow brick road, all ochre, just ochre. So there's a... a let me scroll over there. I've got a couple questions All here. All the swirl right here. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm just going to be painting are. in everything that's road and not shoe, this yellow. Ah, gotcha. I'm going to come in over there on that. And I'm going to very carefully use my brush. On the twirl part, you may need to switch to a smaller brush because the big brush could give you some trouble. So okay. I'll show you that. I'll leave that out so I can show you why you'd switch to a smaller brush. So, uh, Regini had a question here. Okay. What if you, by mistake, put a lot of water on the brush and then used it on the canvas? So the canvas got all what? What okay. can you do then? Well, um, all right. Let's see if I can do that here. So you got you got some runny. Ooh, it really is ready over there now. I'm just letting you know it can go really, really wrong. So this is a little wetter than I'd want to work. One thing that I can do, because I'm very early days in the painting, is I can just take a towel and Here's... get the excess up. Okay. Right? Another thing I can do, and this is an interesting thing, I can reclaim, I'm trying to see who's absorbent here, I'm really, really... <laughs> Not that absorbent brushes. All right, this one's pretty absorbent. One? I can reclaim some of the water. Oh, there it is. He's good. See how I pulled all that water into his bristles? Oh, wow. You just use that like a mop. I use it like a mop. So now I've reclaimed that space on my palette. And I'm like, okay, now I know. i got to start again. i got to rinse off my brush. Make sure if you have that brush doing that to you, that you're just taking that extra step to wipe off on the paper towel or manage your water. A lot of painting is water management. And I think that that's something that happens to like little brushes or new painters at the Sip and Paints when you used to teach their, you know, they don't really, you know, you just kind of a uh, paint along in some wine. Mm -hmm. But I would go out and I would see like, what would be happening to people is just that there would be a, because they buy really inexpensive brushes, too much water on the brush for acrylic paint, especially for student paint. Mm -hmm. And so they'd be getting crazy results, but really it was just how much water is on your brush. And I, I would have this whole thing where I'm like, I'm gonna change your life. <laughs> I'm gonna change everything for you right now. And we'd do it together and they'd always like, oh, it works now. <laughs> it works now. 
So Kiara thinks that we should have red ruby art Sherpa slippers. <laughs> red ruby art Sherpa slippers. Yeah, and, and it was funny. Somebody was earlier saying, uh, I mean, it was uh, Mena, mm -hmm. uh, Mina. Oh, so there, my little camera is wanting to zoom in bad today. Robocam was almost getting a mind of his own today. Like, uh oh, I want to go see that. Yeah, that was... that we're just painting this particular uh, yellow oxide, yellow ochre. Yeah. If you look at the tube of paint, it tells me something important. See so yeah, how I can see those black stripes through there? Yes. It tells me that it's that transparent. Oh, yes. So I'm not expecting it to be opaque and really cover the canvas in thick, creamy swaths. Now, that's historically correct for that color, right? Yeah. Because, you know, there's you know, some... But they have, they have two types. They have an opaque version and a transparent version in ochres. And even if it's not here, it'll be on the back Gotcha. of a tube of paint. You can always find out everything you need to know on your tube of paint. Um, paint companies in general, if they're good, will be informative. Gotcha. In general. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Cozied Up M M Mena Artist mm -hmm. said the red, shoe, uh, the red shoes is what happened uh, on the MGM film. Uh, the shoes in the book are silver. They just didn't show up in Technicolor, so MGM changed them to red. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that is so interesting. And, you know, I hadn't thought about it because I read the books and, of course, saw the movie. Yeah. But I hadn't thought about that they had made an aesthetic difference. <laughs> and Crystal's like totally was like, uh, I love it when she totally messed up uh, and then was like, shows you how to fix it. It's totally something I would do on accident and ditch the whole project because I didn't know how to fix it. Yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people. I think that's, you know, I have even had stuff where I thought something was really just over and somebody will have a trick be like, oh no, you can just do this. It's great to know how to fix problems on a canvas. It's also great to know when to walk away. If it's on fire, walk away. Now, is yellow <laughs> oxide and yellow ochre the same? Not technically, historically. Um, but for the in the same way that ivory black and bone, back, bl bone black are not technically the same. But here's the deal. For the purposes of most of the painting that you're going to do, and if you're not an oil painter, you're not going to be running into that. Right? Like acrylic artists are really not going to be running into the difference between bone black and ivory black for real. Even though Liquitex has their bone black called ivory black, it's not ivory. It's not made from ivory. Mm -mm. They just like the name. Gotcha. So sort of a similar thing. In, in, in oils, though, it's a big deal. All right. So remember I said this was like a little small? Yep. So one of the big things that you can do to make your painting experience just significantly easier, you know, I've been doing a number 10 bright there. I'm going to switch to a number four bright because I'm going to go in a smaller area. Now I can, I can force my brush to work this. I'm gonna go and zoom but in why? <laughs> go, Robocam. It is okay to, if you find like on a motor skill level, right? And I do too. That's like, you know, we talk about motor skills in terms of development, but we all have motor skills. And even from day to day, our motor skills, just like our eyesight can vary wildly. You will not see color as well every single day. It's not a static thing. How your eyes see color. It's not static. It changes from day to day. How tired you are, how stressed you are, how you've been eating. Motor skills are the same thing. Have you ever had a day where it like all came together and it was like you could just see everything and mm -hmm. make it happen? And then other days you're like, ah, who am I? <laughs> That's, those are factors. Yeah. People don't think about them, but they are. I'm going to paint all this green. Green? green. Which, which one? You do? Oh, yeah, you're doing the green. I'm going to switch to a, a mid-size brush. I think I'll switch to a comfortable number eight. You, you, Synthetic fibers, firm filaments, well-weighted handle company that has a good help desk this is what i'm looking for so if you guys know what's happening on the channel we're on um a secret interior brush <laughs> quest again <laughs> which i find super irksome but unavoidable yes <sighs> Ooh, thorny says i did my pairs all night and finished this morning at 6 a.m mm. a new pair person with us 6 a.m 6 a.m that's it you that's... know there wasn't like a deadline on the <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you know what they say: the early pair attracts a worm. I, I, the <laughs> early pair got done at six a.m. The early pair got done <laughs> at six a.m. That's what happened. This is fun because we're going to be, you know, wrapping up the quest, and then um, twenty seventeen we're going to be rethinking it. Was Redoing it, it, rebooting it. No, there'll be more quests. An even bigger art quest for An 2017. Even bigger. One new thing is dun, we will dun. be using a reference photo that we own and took <laughs> so people can <laughs> always log in and get it. Yeah. Things we've learned from 2016. So many things were learned yeah. during the big art quest. Many, many things. One was that lava does not need to be its own quest. <laughs> <laughs> lava quest. <laughs> Although we could Maybe we could just put it in with fire and some other things. Lumpy do it. Yellow brick road quest. Yeah, there we go. We could do a brick quest. Brick. All right. So I'm taking this cad yellow over here. So I've got these colors. We have them in the description below. I'll talk, I forgot to talk about them at the beginning, which I usually do. I have sap green here. Any warm green will do. I have cad yellow medium here in hue. Any warm yellow will do. Yellow ochre, yeah, yellow oxide also works. Titanium, white, glazing, medium. Ultramarine blue, and I am using alizarin crimson. I'm going to have to come zoom out a little bit because I think that ultramarine blue is a little off the canvas. Okay, oh, no, I'm I just, zoom. you I'm know what I'll just do? I'll just, uh, just, um, this. I, I can also zoom out there. Also, I could turn my palette in a normal direction. I don't know what is up yeah, with saying, me today. I, don't know, I think that there's a disturbance in the force. Yep, so here there. I am just doing that green. I'm just painting all the space around the road and legs. You know, the thing about this green right here, or this project, is you could also do these in deco paints if you needed to. The craft bottles. Just find approximations of green. And if you're trying, if you're brand brand new and you're not really sure how to tell if a color is warm or cool, we have a big art quest on that. Oh, yeah. It's totally free. You can enjoy it anytime. <laughs> Luna has come over and asked for a little milk, so I'm gonna pour her this milk while we're. <laughs> she go? Did she go and get she it for you? It. We went and got it for me. She's being so nice. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Look, I know you're busy, but I need this milk." <laughs> I would like a milk, please. I'm in the middle of my Barbie thing, so I'm busy too. <laughs> I'm just carefully painting around my edges. And you can see the, the two greens together make a very vibrant green. Now, you're not necessarily worried about the, the continuity of this green. No, not at all. Why is that? Well, if you want it very, here, here, it's really about what you want. I want lots of tonality and painterly expression in my paintings. <laughs> she's she's whispering to me. I she's giving can, us a grocery list. I don't know if you can hear her loud. You're running whispering. low. You need to go to the store. That's right. Yeah, you but, need to go get a job and help out. But that's cool. <laughs> so, as we say to the six-year-old, ready for one of these people to get a driver's license and start helping out with some of these chores. So I'm going to go back to my number four in here for the same reason I used out there. Anyways, the if you were looking for a completely smooth, uniform, kind of printed look, like a lithograph, yep. you would want to use um, a fluid, high-quality acrylic, like um, a fluid by Golden. Uh-huh. Because you would just, it's it's very soft body, so it comes out like kind of like a beautiful ink, the perfect consistency, and you just paint it very smoothly with a slightly softer brush. Gotcha. And that would give you an even... Perfectly smooth, even lithograph. So it would look like a movie poster. Gotcha. Look like something from, you know, the Nouveau period. But I want this to feel like I painted it. Always. Right. So that's me. Some, some of these choices you make because you like that aesthetic look yeah. of the... And I got to tell you guys, it's always okay for you to change a choice. If you came along and said, well, I really like what she designed up until a point... But this, I cannot stomach. Oh, well, goodness, change it. This is just, this is just us on an art journey. It's, so, it's not an art march. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I push the wrong button here? Hold on a second. And that's a lot of why I didn't do one of the, a lot of artists like to do the, the painting with so-and-so kind of stuff. And it's about their process and their method. And it's really like they'll, like, remove you from workshops sometimes if you don't use their color palette. Yeah. 
And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it's a different intent. Now, Tammy. Totally, that's all. Just a different intent. So, question from Tammy in Canada. Yes, Tammy in Canada. <laughs> Will adding high flow and gel to my dry, stiff, heavy body make it more manageable? Um. So, she's in Canada and worried that her paint got frozen. Oh, okay. Well, if it did get frozen, that can impact your paint. Um, I have heard, and I will check this, that the best thing for that might be GAC 100. Um, but yeah, like if I mix into high flow, if my paint is not curing or damaged in some way, and I mix it into a soft body gel or paint or anything, they're going to get a median of that mixture. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm, this is, this is soft gel, right? So if I'm using soft gel as an extender, this doesn't have a heavy body. It's a little bit self-leveling. Hmm. It's going to smooth it out and slow the drying. You know, all of that. You can use these products together. You really can. Feel confident that you can. And then if you can't, it's a failing on the manufacturer's part or you did not read the label. <laughs> because if, if, if it's a product that doesn't work well with other acrylic products, generally a good manufacturer will put that on the label information. Gotcha. Never, never skip reading the label. There's lots of good stuff to know on a paint label. And, and they put it on there for a reason. Yeah, really, they do. They, they really they, don't want to mess with you. They want you to know. They're like, please, please, let's put more information here for you. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> yeah. With links to more information. With links to more information. And generally, um, they'll have a YouTube channel. Good manufacturers will have a YouTube channel, social media presence of some kind, blogs, a help desk with a helpline that answers within three days. No joking. If if your paint company doesn't have videos of paint drying, then you probably should wonder what's up. Yeah, they all do. They all do. They, they all, all do. They all you want to see a demo of any product, most of the paint companies and brush companies have some type of demo. Yeah, I thought they should, you know. I'm not saying they're good or they know anything about YouTube. I'm just saying they have a video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I all of them do. They all, all right. Work. So when I have that green in and I'm happy with that in such a way that I'm thrilled, right? I've got that in. Is that, no, and so I need to put in, I need to use my small brush to do this. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So, uh, Thank you. I can, I can totally forget things in a painting because I just get working. Well, uh, see, I have a lot of help. I have about you know, two to three hundred people out here at any given time reminding me that I was Sherpa wondering if anybody was going to be here today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, we might be here for like 20 people today. Everyone may be out, stuck out. Lots of good live today. There's Angela today. My mom's on today. You could literally just check out and paint all day. <laughs> just saying. I'm going to move these over here to slightly dirty your water. Now, what about that little corner down there? Thank you. Is that going to get hit? It does. Okay. I will use this little guy. That's a good thing that we're here. It is. I don't know what I'd be doing without you. You'd be painting some other part of the canvas right now. I think I'd probably be working on that fall door while I'm finishing up that first door that everybody wants. <laughs> I'm never going to be done with. Now i got to like put on... You guys have to forgive me on our door video because I have to. I had to do it over several days. So continuity may not be there. Like I may have different makeup. <laughs> <laughs> See if and you, nails, it's going to happen. I'm curious if, the, if, if we can get people to spot when we change. <sighs> I feel like it's obvious, but okay. It's, it's, the curious. important thing is that you guys... They, they get the whole video. It's all there. <laughs> I, and, and I even did some clever blending. I'm going to pull out my Lizarin Crimson and my uh, Ultramarine Blue. Uh -huh. You could do any crimson, and really you can do the, any reds that you have, just rem any, any of the cool red that you might have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mist my palette because it's hot in here. And I'll slow down the... The drawing a little bit. This is going to be a little transparent, but since I'm going to layer it so much, I don't have to really worry. And you're like, wait, these are ruby slippers. Why they start out purple? Well, if I want them to feel antique and old, hmm. I have to start with a dark color that I build and build on. And also, I want something for that bright, vibrant, warm glitter to pull against. Because if you guys remember, we got to have a glitter time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, 
So yeah. I was just reading in here in 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 chat, and uh, uh, I guess so. I had never heard of uh, Hugo Cabaret before. Cabaret. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it's a, a a really really well known children's novel, historical fiction. Yeah. And uh, so some people were asking about uh, whether you you were going to do some paintings based on that. And I was like, you know, I had not thought of that, but I do stuff entirely directed by requests, mm -hmm. and I hadn't thought of doing a Hugo piece. Um, yeah, the inventions of Hu Hu Hugo yeah. Cabret, and I'm assuming it's said Cabret. You know, I guess what I would be wondering Cabret. is, do you want the um, wind up part of that storyline, or do you want the movie part of the storyline, the vintage movie scenes. Well, see, like, like, so you what? What from the story do you want represented? Like the the I, so that's like the 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 moon who got shot in the eye. Well, that's part of it, but then there's the the fantasy part of it with the the clockwork. Gotcha. So, that, like, I'm I was unfamiliar altogether with this, and that's why I was asking in chat. Like, uh, so you know, some of the moderators give me some support here. Like, oh yeah, this is what it is. And I was yeah, like, oh, I'm just kind of like, so, so that's always it to me too. Like, I can always do something from any storyline. Like, I you know do anything from the Little Prince, but it's there's a lot happening in that story. Where in where in there do we want to go? You know, Pan. Where do we want to go? Mm -hmm. And I'm up for everything. Like, we're doing two Ozes because I feel like there's a couple. Th I could have. Dude, I struggle with this because I wanted to also do from the witch's perspective. <laughs> you know? Before the shoes got stolen. Right. Huh. That'd be interesting. So, it was... it was. Uh, we're going to do the landscape on Saturday. We're going to do an incredible oh, Oz right. landscape. A little Kincaidish. I like that. I like the idea of that. Do you? Yes. I don't feel like I'm making enough eye contact today, but I'm into painting. You, you're painting today. You're, you're, you want to turn around and make some eye contact? I got to get through the shoe right, and then we'll make some eye contact. After the shoe. After, you know, we got like over 250 people here that are all painting along, <sighs> hanging out with us. So, so appreciate that, guys. You just have no idea. I appreciate the shares. I appreciate the subscribes. We really appreciate the likes. We live on likes. Like, like, we like. nom, nom, nom the likes. Nom the likes. Nom, nom, nom. Good. We got the little toe tucked behind the other toe. You could have the shoes, you know, further out. The reference photo has them further out. More Oz and Stephanie screaming, yes, yes, please do the witch's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, it's... Oh, Mona, Mona was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mona, too? Mona. Uh, yeah, Mona said, oh, love that cinnamon. We'll be looking forward to Saturday. So, yeah, Saturday, um, the plan for Saturday is, is a little more in the Thomas Kincaid universe. In other words, a little more lush, a little more painted out of the road. That's why we're doing perspective on Thursday, sort of vanishing over the hills with the poppies in the forefront and the Emerald City and the rainbow in the sky. Mm. Got to have a landscape, right? Got to have a landscape. Got to have a landscape. Got to. You don't really actually got to, but I decided that we got to, so there so we are. I'm taking my ultramarine over to my titanium white. I may actually move because it's just getting kind of crazy over here, and I don't want this to go green at all. I may move a little titanium white over here okay. to just work with my blue. Now, uh, Like you do. Kiara was asking, uh, can you mix paint to get green if you have a mixing book, or do you need to get the direct paint itself? You can mix to paint to get green. Um, you should definitely do the big art quest on color mixing and how to make a color mixing chart so you see what colors your paint mixes. Gotcha. That's the best thing. Even if you have a color mixing book, you want to make a color chart. So, just so you know, just that always, was... always, always, always. That was, that was our, our, our own little brush, Kiki, who asked yeah, that. she's fantastic. Yes. So, high five there. So, I'm just painting this light blue. This is also get the color of her gingham. Mm -hmm. We'll glaze a shadow in here later. Right? None of this is particularly hard. I could actually do this one at a sip and paint and be okay. Get everybody through in two, three hours. I mean, I make y'all work. Nobody gets to slow down or take a break or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a party! <laughs> <laughs> She's so, really making us go! Oh, oh, they, they definitely want flying monkeys. Flying monkeys. Uh, there's there there is. I would I would almost say, chanting. 
flying monkeys. Oh like there's, wow! There's ch- but monkeys there's some- are the witch, or mm-hmm. just the monkeys. Although Sonia says monkeys scare her, and she kind of laughs. She says she added a lol to it, so I imagine that. <laughs> but flying monkeys would be would be kind of cool. Yes, Pam says flying monkeys. You know, not my witch, not my monkeys. My monkeys fly. <laughs> <laughs> It really depends on where you're from in Oz. Yes. That place is a term, tumultuous place. Oh, and Kim said the Little Brush Raven asked last night to, for you to please post up more watercolor paintings. Okay, Raven. We should do some, 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 water, some more of those watercolor works. Those were fun. Yeah, they are. I'm really enjoying those ones where you do the water and it bleeds and mm-hmm. becomes the painting. A painting of Dorothy in the house in the tornado. Ooh, that's another good idea. Oh, I like that. I also thought about the tornado. Mm, yes. We don't bless our storms when they come into our lives and <laughs> rip up our house and send us to an alternate dimension, but sometimes that's what we need. <laughs> She's got the accordion, John. <laughs> no, no, that's the uh, the the tuning um, <laughs> from the, uh, uh, the the guitar. It's the tuning harmo. Har- uh, uh, well, at least it won't content ID. No, it won't. It'll just make little... Can I have... Can I... <laughs> Thanks, baby. I appreciate that. Anyone needs to, you know, find an A5. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you, can, you can do it. Just, you know, try to be more in key, sweetie. <laughs> I'm just giving them a hard time. It's a guitar tuner, so it's just, you know... <laughs> I'm going to do her legs. Now, I'm going to do a fair skin tone. Uh, We have a big art quest on different skin tones. My two cents is, and I feel this in painting, that all painting is kind of self-portraiture. And it is, you know, the world's current state of politics aside, paint it how you like it. Yeah. It isn't any more meaningful than that, and it doesn't impact other people outside of you. Yes. Sometimes people will try to convince you that it does, <laughs> but it's paint on a canvas. So do the legs any way that make you feel included in the painting. That's my art advice. And as you may or may not know, I, I went to a very diverse, famous Black Baptist College. So yes. paint it how you like it. It's just paint. It is just paint. Right? So in the book, How You Saw Dorothy, that's what you should do. <laughs> and there is going to be comments later, but I feel that very strongly. Yeah. So. so Christy, Christy right. was like, "I don't have two cents, just nonsense," and I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just lots of stuff to be wound up about in the world today. Mm-hmm. Definitely not this. And if you just need any of those paint mixing recipes, just big art quest. Yeah, Angela's definitely like, "I need another skin tone quest." So yeah, we'll definitely put that on yeah. the books. Skin That's tones coming. are they're. They're diverse, man. They're yeah. hard. They are. They're also incredibly rewarding. And being able to... There's an incredible painter that does uh, portraits of native Mongolia. Oh, are you ready for some eye contact there? <sighs> was I, spo- I was supposed to. Supposed I was mixing to. skin tones and got distracted. So here's my thing on this skin tone. I'm taking a little bit of alizarin crimson over to my yellow ochre. This is a very simple recipe that I use, right? So I get kind of this sort of peached ochre. Yeah. And that makes my, sh- you know, my basic shadow, my basic skin tone and my basic highlight mixes from that base recipe. All skin tones have a base recipe that you work from. But if you think about it, we talk about warm colors and cool colors. Skin comes in warm undertones and cool undertones. If you really start to observe people, you'll be like, that guy has a lot of dogs in him purple in his skin. Yeah. And that's how you really not kind of need to start going out and seeing the world. Also, skin tone when you paint it, and I think this is important for us as people to realize, is not even. Yes. It's not like you mix one and then just paint a whole thing. When you really start painting people, you'll realize this patch here isn't like this patch here, isn't like this patch here, isn't like their ears, isn't like the tips of the fingers. Each of them requires observation. Mm-hmm. Purpose of these legs, though, we're just going to mix in a basic thing and kind of. Because we're not really making a hyper-realistic brick road now, either. Before you run off there, because there were a couple... I'll of sip words, then. You're going to take a sip, because there were, there were a couple questions. One, 
at, they want to know where you could get that awesome shirt you were wearing. And look, we can go. The Sherpa Shop. If you go to uh, theartsherpa.com or shop.theartsherpa.com, you can find all of those lovely shirts and mugs. t-shirts and mugs. We and got the paint water, not paint water. We got the Kevin Kraken mug. We got the girl in the red dress mug. The Red Riding Hood mug. We got totes. We got hoodies. We have crop tops, which have actually sold. And art high fives to Lisa, our own flame gremlin, who has coordinated that store and made sure that it's always on point. And Plus sizes. We, yeah, Kita it, sizes. Kid sizes. Onesies. I feel like even Philip DeFranco would check out our store and go, good job. Yeah, we have stuff too. All right, so, and, and <laughs> the the other thing is they were asking about like oh, you try to go no, back go to paint. painting. You can go paint. You can go paint. We're gonna go back to painting. But they're just asking. I'm just have commentary now. Mm. So it's just like you well, know. I want I want to do this again where I pull okay. the alizarin crimson out. I come over to the yellow ochre and I'm just mixing that base color. Right, and you want a nice base color. You can see how that's a shadow. I'm gonna rub this out of my brush and then so if you grab just white to lighten it. So you get to that basic skin tone there. Yeah. And then it's easy for me to get the shadow. All that. So I'm going to just paint this in. Mm -hmm. Paint just this basic Caucasian skin tone. But again, if I were painting an actual leg, it'd have a lot going on. Would not be even. So when you're thinking about your skin and looking in the mirror going, Oh my gosh, my forehead and my chin are not even. Good, because only plastic is even. <laughs> If you looked like you would paint yourself, people would run away from you screaming because they would think you were an animated mannequin. <laughs> That's only Kim Cattrall, right? Hey, so this No is... shade towards Kim. I love Kim. Oh. <laughs> Why would... No, no. I, I, I read something else that had me distracted, so I don't know. Oh. What are you shading, Kim? I'm not shading Kim, but I just I was referring to a movie she was in the mannequin not making a Sex in the City comic because I realized some people might not remember her in mannequin. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thinking okay. I'm like saying she is a mannequin uh, uh, and not getting that joke at all. I don't. I'm. <laughs> date so, myself up in here while I'm painting these legs. So you They're know a who, little rosy right now. I'm gonna have to lighten them up. Do you know who is with us? Who's with us today? Little brush. Little brush. Brooke is here for Hi, the Brooke. first live ever, and that's Alan's daughter. Uh, yay! Brooke is prolific. I don't want to. Oh, I'm going to bring that back over there. I'm pulling out my darker color first and then lightening it up and getting so my Gail, gaze and going to paint this leg too. So, Kim, Kim, so uh, Christy says Kim Cottrell is hilarious in she that. Is. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. I was like, oh my gosh, I've made the Sex in the City women mad and I'm afraid oh, of them. No, everybody I else. mean, I am one of them. <laughs> but I'm afraid of them. See, I was completely lost here for a minute because I'm like, who are we talking about? I think I may have just not followed that completely. So, You mean you didn't watch everything that Kim Cattrall was in? It, I, to say that I knew who Kim Cattrall McCartney. was. McCartney? So, Come on, man. You know. All right. So back to some more relevant questions. Back to relevant. So you see I got these sort of skin tone legs happening here. You do. So, uh, so, uh, so it's okay to have the, the, the skin tones be uneven? Yes. What you want them to have is the value they would have as if light was reflecting on them. That's the bigger deal. Ah, gotcha. Right? And, and so, like, you've got to make them feel, I'm just taking a highlight here to light the front of the shin, that they just exist in real space and they're really lit. lit. Um, when we get into keying, I'm going to show you how you can paint a portrait right out of the tube of paint, not using any skin tones. Some of you. Some of you are going to look at that project and go, you crazy? This so, is a quest. This is a, this is a death sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see I'm just adding a little highlight to that. I just want to, I want a slightly different aspect between the two. D. Hi, D. She's like, the D says, John, when are we switching to Christmas? And I'm like, well, didn't didn't one of our fav favorite we coffee just, establishments just get like we nearly... We just did a snowman and a winter wonderland. We're in there. We're deep in winter. I got to get some fallout. There's Ooh. stuff to do. I got this door. I got another door. And then I got that Christmas door. 
And then there's some landscaping. And then you'll be I found sp- some good lands. I want you guys to some, build the landscaping. We have some winter for peg coming, so yeah. that'll be coming up. Yeah, there's some there's some stuff happening. Plus, I have last year's winter. Oh yeah, there's a did lot. Did you did you do the winter wonderland the winter landscape? Mm. Did you did you did do you, the snowman? Did, did you oh, do yeah. all the nutcrackers? <gasps> did you do the Santa? I had so much fun. That was I did some of those were were really fun last year because that's when we were playing with early live stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't. I can't say that I was fantastically on point with everything <laughs> we probably need to refilm some stuff i'm, I'm gonna probably need, but you know what you could go back and tell me which ones i should refilm <laughs> don't so, say all of them <laughs> when i've got this in yep. right i now have the underpainting in. i can put in my gingham what what's that that's the weird pattern on her dress oh, oh. and i'm gonna get this uh i'm gonna go with a number eight bright a number eight bright okay. number eight bright I'm going to wet my brush and drag it off. I'm going to pull out a little ultramarine, load it on the tip of my brush. Get some white on there because I don't want it to be totally bright blue and a lot of glazing medium. Now, here's my thing on the gingham. Saying this wrong. People are probably <laughs> laughing right now. The first one is you're going to want to make as vertical of you as you can of a line. It may be sort of uh, kind of scratchy or sketchy. But there's a trick with this, so don't fuss on this because you've got to come back and do a couple things. Okay. Try to come over spaced about the same amount every time, making vertical stripes. You know, figure out what your spacing is and just stick with it. I'm using glazing. The glazing is allowing what's underneath to, to show through, and I actually want that. Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to say gingham again because I feel like I've got a thing happening there with that. <sighs> yeah, I'm excited about the holidays. I'm really mostly just very excited about some landscape stuff and some more uh, bubbles, the realistic bubbles I'm super pumped about. Oh, yeah. There's things I'm excited to do. Stuff that's in the can we've got to figure out when to release. Now, there were there were some there was a very interesting questions that were coming up that are topical. I, I would like to answer interesting questions. So, have you been thinking about doing any landscapes? We've been watching uh, uh, one of our favorite landscapers, haven't we? Oh, is that the question? Because well, I actually, feel like I just said I was going to do landscapes. I know, I know. But, <laughs> but, but the question was actually, do you have any realistic landscapes coming up? And I was just like thinking, that's so awesome. Cause we were just Are they going to be as awesome as Rick's? No, because no, I'm not going to row my boat out to an island and fight vipers. Dude, that, Swedish vipers. The island was probably the uh, one of the more awesome things I have John seen. John and I are watching it. I'm like, that snake's going to get him. He's barefoot in the water. And John's like, no, that snake's gonna, not going to be there. I'm like, it could double okay. back and get so, him. Reference. And then we're just back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, listen, and then, and then Rick's like, and these islands are a haven for snakes. It was like great couple moment for me. I'm like, okay, so we have to f- tell everyone who we're talking about. Tell it. Well, it's we're Rick, patrons. Rick Negliero, Negliero, and I, I'm probably saying his name horribly wrong, but we'll I card him. Bushcraft artist in Sweden. Yeah. So this guy is so awesome. Him and and his dog Patches just sort of go out into the got a horse the too. Wild. I, I don't know his. I know he has horses. I don't know his horse's name, though. But he just goes out here in the wild. And what I'm really curious about is, like, where are they going? Is this just like they just walk out into Sweden's northern territory? Backyard. Or is it, is it like his, his land? Is it his buddy's land? Is it like just open camping territory? I think Sweden is big. I, well, cause, I mean, like, I'm just sort of envious. It's like, I want to just go camping on the island. I was really tosses. envious till I saw the dancing mosquitoes on the pallet. The, this is way back when I was first watching. They're like, hover- and he like, and I tried to, sh- I like went and made John watch this clip the other day. I was like, look, because I would be like, I would take my brush and like, cadmium, kill you all. Yeah, but it, he like catches one on his finger and it, sends it off like like a Disney. Seriously, character. It's, it's 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 not a it, that's it's too not much a mosquito respect when for it life. sounds like a helicopter coming in there. Yeah, it's too much respect for life. That's what I'm saying. There can be too much respect for life. I don't respect fire ants either. <laughs> Anyway, Rick is one of our favorite things to watch on if, YouTube. On YouTube, um, he'll probably be included related, in so. our top twenty little artists that you should be watching. When video. you when you combine Boy Scouts and painting, yes, you, you get Rick. <laughs> there's there's hope someday to go visit and paint with Rick. Yeah, he comments here sometimes. I got a shout out in a video. I felt very special. <laughs> you got a couple actually. I know. Well, he and I are both of the same mind that 
um, pretension in art mm -hmm. is a problem. Yeah. It, well, it keeps people from painting and it keeps people from being creative and it doesn't really serve anything. I mean, and that's not the same thing as being informed or educated in art. Because I know some people that are crazy informed and educated and are not pretentious. Yeah. And when they talk to you, you don't ever feel bad or stupid. You just feel like you discovered something new. Yeah. And that's often a lot of the people that really, really work in art. Like, you know, at the museum. They're just excited to be there. Yeah. You know. All right. So when you get your verticals in, guess uh -huh. what you get to do? What do we do? Horizontals, but I suck at going like this flat, so I'm going to go like this. <laughs> oh, you're gonna totally, you're cheating, aren't you? I'm not cheating. Always move the canvas to protect your physical health and your mental health. So it's like you don't have to keep it some proper form no. way and like, so, so does that mean you can hold your brush any old way you want to? Uh, as long as you have control over it, you can do what you like. You should just make sure that you have good body posture and posture that's good for your neck and uh, back and hips. So, Linda... Take care of yourself. Now, this is an interesting question hmm. um, because I was curious about this at, at, at one point, too. Linda was asking, should we try to bend the pattern of the skirt to follow the hemlines and the folds of the skirt? So to if try to make If you it feel up to doing a folded cloth project... And you have a good reference to see how the skirt folded, like you went and got a movie and you found a skirt and you wanted to fold it, absolutely. This is a little closer into pop art space. And yeah, This definitely is am. more based off of like the idea of movie posters and things. So we were just doing this graphically. But if you want to go for the full kit and caboodle and get more realistic with the piece, you can do that. Mm. There's no, there's no like, I'm not going to come in your house and be like, you didn't do exactly what I did. <laughs> I just want you to paint and I want you to like what you got out of it and feel proud about it. I want you to paint with your kids and kids to paint with their parents and people to paint with their friends and your cat to come by and say, oh, mama's a good artist. That's what I want. So once you have that in, there's an interesting trick you can do. What is the interesting trick? I'm going to show you. I will not even hide it from you. I'm gonna put out a little more glazing medium. Now, are we gonna get to glittering this today? Yeah. Cause I saw some of, some some of my. Uh, we have a lot of friends here who come in to see some glittering. I saw Chris plays games here earlier. Yeah, Chris, I, we're glittering today. So I'm gonna uh, do every other stripe I, down. Well, oh. Every other stripe painted down. So not, I, not every stripe, every other stripe. And I have to wonder. Are how many people are going to post up their pictures of, of, of glittered feats and wands? I'm really looking forward to because I like the glitter paintings a lot. Yeah, and this one is easier than the other ones we've done. Uh huh. So I'm going to show you how to glitter with the soft gel and do a brush on glitter. So this is a gateway glitter project. This is a gateway glitter, but we have a playlist in the iCard to the full glitter. So you, you can get your full glitters on. You can. Yeah, and and if like, you full glittered before, have at it. If you're ready, you feel like you can handle it. And if you dare, you can even glitter beard. Yes. It, it has been Now, done. do the opposite coming up. Go this stripe, this stripe, this stripe, every other stripe. This creates sort of a visual weave. Or you can do this stripe, this stripe, just every other stripe. It's subtle, but it makes a difference into how the pattern feels woven. Wow. See? How it looks like some stripes are a little more forward than other stripes. Yeah. It's a cool thing you can do. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying you can do it. Ooh. Hmm. So Gail's still working on her phoenix. She's ready. I, I was interested in seeing, in seeing some glitter phoenixes, too. Were you? Yeah. I was kind of hoping. I was hope, But you know, we, we, we haven't been doing a lot of glitter stuff so you know glitter variations may come glitter variations may come what glitter may come what not quite like come? what dreams may come but it's something it's it's <laughs> glitter dreams glitter dreams we can we can dream champagne glitter. wishes and glitter dreams let's brick this road okay so what do you need to do to brick it 
Let's break the road. What? I don't know where you're going. Make it go. I'm going to put out a little cat and a little yellow again. Because I feel like i got a lot of green in my yellow. I'll probably still come get some of that. I just don't want green bricks. Whoa. So I still have my number six here. I'm going to pull a little white into my yellow. And this is going to be, this is how I'm going to make my bricks. I'm going to use the, sh the, the brush to create the bricks. So I'm going to make a stroke. I think I'll make my bricks about, oh, just under an inch long. Cool. And then I'm going to go a space and make a stroke. 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 Don't have a stroke doing your bricks. Just make a stroke. <laughs> That would be bad. It would. You don't know why that, don't do, definitely don't do that. No. So. Wait, wait. Oh. And then we're going to see this brick right here where it's like this, the space. Uh -huh. You've got to lay a brick here. Oh, you're going to stagger them. You have to stagger the bricks. Uh, otherwise, it just looks like a row of. Lines. Lines. If you don't stagger your bricks, you're just going to, yeah, look like you've got rows of lines. So then I'm going to stagger here. It's not, we're not trying to make real, like, architectural bricks. We're trying to create a brick effect. So it's, these are emotional bricks. These are emotional bricks. Lay them down and walk on your road, sister. <laughs> <laughs> you got to follow your own path. Say motivational things to yourself as you're bricking. <laughs> So can I can I ask some glitter questions? You can ask some glitter questions while we're bricking. As long as everyone's feeling confident on what we're doing on the bricking and they don't need further explanation. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention for brick questions. Okay. So, uh, although Dawn says she does love this brick effect. I'm okay. going to go on the edge of my brush here to just imply that some of those bricks were hidden by a shoe. So if you don't have glitter, uh, if you don't have red glitter, can you use any color glitter? Yeah, it's your painting. I and mean, that it won't be, just as long as you understand the fundamental fact that if you don't use red glitter, it won't be red glitter. Right. I'm just saying, because I'll get a question like, <laughs> I'm in there and I just want to say to you now, if it's not red glitter. But if you wanted to use, say, clear hollow glitter, that which is okay. probably what you're actually asking about. If you're talking about clear hollow glitter, the red will shine through the glitter and that's perfectly fine. It'll have a slight glitter effect. But if you were to use silver, then it will cast a silver on the shoe. <laughs> And if you were to use green, it would stop being red altogether. Hmm. So, is a uh, is now Linda was asking. Uh, I have some glitter nail polish. Can I add that over the acrylic paint? Yeah, you can actually paint nail polish over the acrylic paint, but don't tell anyone I told you that. Just <laughs> all didn't hear it from me. You know, two, three hundred people here hanging out with us. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Well, see, here's the thing. You can paint oils over acrylics. You can paint. The issue with nail polish is that it's rigid. Okay. So if you're on a canvas, it can crack. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you can um, mix up nail enamel and acrylic paint. But you can't put the acrylic back over that. No, it won't should not. Stick. It will It might, actually, but you will get some. You, <laughs> I've seen some artists break some rules. It, it has bonding issues. There can be bonding issues. So I'm just breaking along. You could do these bricks with a number four. You could do these bricks with a two. If you wanted lots of little fussy bricks, you just want to make sure that you feel like you've got bricks. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to say, this is a brick road. I may, even as I move up this, get a smaller brush. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it makes sense. So I'm just trying to lay these bricks. So you see, I'm just doing the weave. Now, when I get to this part, this is a big pain. Mm -hmm. And I might go from this six to a four as I'm trying to make this crazy curve and get smaller bricks out there. So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come around my curve with bricks. Now, is this one of those times when you could pick up and rotate that canvas? You can and maybe should. You know, says you a husband to, to his be... wife who often puts her arm out because she doesn't do that. In a... <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just, did, you don't even hear me complaining because I know I do it. <laughs> so I'm going to make a line right here in the curve. 
because what I've got to basically do is curve. Bricks don't curve like this. So you got to fake it. This is my fake trick. So as the bricks are getting further away, they might be getting smaller. And Ooh. See? There you go. Flubbing it. Flub the bricks. Flub so your bricks. Flub your bricks. <laughs> so how many years will a... Uh a, a painting that ha lasts, that's been glittered without varnishing it? Um, well, here's the thing. You should spray varnish your painting. Yeah, and I can talk to And it. enough years that it stops being your problem and it's the next collector's problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible, but this is really true about a lot of art, right? So Turner, one of our very favorite artists, used to upset the heck out of his good friend who made paint over at Windsor & Newton. Uh-huh. Um, being the issues that he would paint with things that were just known to me not archival. They were not light fast. They were just, you know, a few years and the guy would just be losing it. And Turner's like, not my problem. This is your problem. Museum's problem. Not my problem. Right. And there's some truth to that, that you as an artist, I mean, it's great to have very archival things. And sometimes the last painting standing wins. It's not the best painting. It's the one that's still there. But overall... Most of this stuff is more permanent than we are, in the exception of, like, say, something like markers. Those Copic markers are not permanent and will be gone in short order. Gone? <laughs> they fade out fast. Remember oh. all the marker work I did in oh, yeah. Yeah. school? So I'm just bringing my bricks around here. Just trying to make sure that my road is bricky. It is a bricky road. Bricky. Now, the order that you've gone and painted this in is because you like the way that it creates these layers? That's pretty much what I like. Yeah, I like to create the implication of layers. Mm -hmm. And so, by doing this, it creates a depth in the painting. Skip the layers. Yeah. And you'd be in trouble. If you have a green that makes you unhappy, now is a good time to even go in and do that second coat. If you do. Yeah. I don't. But if you do. I like it. So I got my bricks in. Feels like a brick road going somewhere. It does. Some of what helps this piece is that we have context, you know, once the shoes are glittering and the, we still haven't even put the wand in. <sighs> we got to put our <laughs> wand in. Is so much painting layers. So many painting layers. It is. I'm going to do this before I paint this in because my wand is going to give me grief. Now, I like my wand to come over the foot. I'm going to try to use this. To, well, that's not going to show for you guys at all. Let me see if I can get this blue one to show. You can kind of see that a little bit. Can you guys see that? So I'm going to use my thing to make one. Now, here's my truth. I am terrible at stars. It's just truth. Can't help it. So I got to do that little kid star like that you do with your kids. Kids, if you already know this star, you're set. Which is the line down. See that one? Yeah. That's how I get the bases for my wand in. And then once I have those lines, then I sketch it bigger. So it's a little bit better. Helps that I'm going to glitter this sucker. And the reason I do it now instead of after I paint it is so I can paint out any lines I don't like. If that makes sense to everybody. So I'm going to paint in my gray on my wand. And it's a good time to put out um, the little bit of black you're going to need to do the wand. I'll show you a little trick because I don't have perfect lines. Yeah. So I'll show you that little trick. But first I'm going to show you my gray. I'm going to take a little of my red over to my blue. You can even add some black to it if you need to. And then I'm just going to paint my wand in with this color. Lots of other colors are going to go in my wand, but this is a good time to just paint that in. Blend as one. 
depends on if you were a fan of Wicked or not, whether she's a good guy or bad, or questionable. Well, really, she ended up being good, but, you know, temporarily questionable character. <laughs> Like Glee with Oz. So I like to just have this little wand doing its little wandy thing, being magical right here. Yeah. Right? Once I have that magical right there, my ruler is going to be my friend again because I am not necessarily going to paint a very crisp straight line. And then when you have it like this, you might be adjusting. It's a good time also to just adjust your um, star and. Make it how you want it to be. Whatever your wand's going to be doing. Do your wand how you need to. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm going to get my little ruler back here. I've got my fluid paint. You could do a pen. Or you could just throw the brush Drop at yourself brush. and stain your shirt and just be a whole problem. <laughs> See, this helps me. Because that's not my natural line. Gotcha. <laughs> My natural line would be like, woo! Be like, you'd be like, were you having a little fun when you were painting? Does it look like you really knew where you were going? <laughs> but that's how I get that. Helps me. Maybe it'll help you. Yeah. Socks. Socks. Let's glaze them. All right. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and a little of my glazing. You could just dry brush this. And right here at the shoe... I'm going to just use this thin glaze to create a little shadow right here. It's just the second layer of the sock. Just finishing it off. A little bit over the toe and then right under the cuff. Once I have that, go ahead and grab a little of your white paint. Don't rinse your brush. And just create the blend or the shaping of the foot here. Socks were an interesting little touch because you wouldn't really see, in general, somebody with socks in their heels now. Like, not with Jimmy Choo's. With what? With a good pair of shoes. Oh, okay. We don't, we don't own any Jimmy Choo's, which is why John hasn't been traumatized like your husband might have been traumatized at home. <laughs> <laughs> I think my best shoes are Crocs right now. I don't know if any of you are there. <laughs> you know, that's like, my best shoes right now are a pair of Crocs. Crocs are not too He bad. only knows Manolas because his mom was such a Sex and the City fan. It's true. So you're just kind of painting around the, the outline of that. Now, how come you don't paint the star on top of the socks after you've already painted them all in? Well, because I might have really, really had an issue with my star. And if we put the star in now, that gives everybody at home a chance to sort of paint around it mm. and crisp it up. And ha and haven't you had trouble with, like, the colors layering? Yeah, it can be a thing. So gotcha. if you really thin paint. Sometimes I don't just think about what my painting experience is here because I can get away with a whole ton of stuff. But you might not have the same paint as me. And i got to think about what you might be going through at home, too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to do our little lines on the socks. The, oh, yeah. Those, those are cute. Yeah. So I'm going to get my little white paint out. And just make your vertical lines like this. Vertical line. You might need more white. If you do, that's okay. Paint around your star. And then wipe your brush. We're almost done, guys. Really? Yeah. And then do your vertical shadows right there like this. It just gives it that sense of sockiness. Like sockiness. Socks. You need any more shadow here? It's a good time to just sort of dry brush or scrumble or put that in. Wherever you need it, go for it. Ooh. Go for it. It's looking pretty sharp. It's looking pretty sharp. We don't really mind that, do we? No. No. So, what? 
how is how is glitter coming? Where does where does when, when do we get to put the glitter on? Soon. 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 After the shoes are painted. I want to see glitter. I can tell that. I guess you're reflecting the community's <laughs> feelings. Like, glitter. We would like some glitter. Glitter is happening. Do go ahead though and put this dappling in on your star. Right. You know, even make your purple with your red and purple and dapple in your star. This is going to help your holographic bling be blingtacular. Mm -hmm. Also, if you don't have glitter, this is how you're going to get the magic of the star done. Because some of you might not have glitter and we don't want to paint like everybody's got glitter. Uh -huh. That would be a huge mistake. Not include everybody in our community. I'm just dabbing here with the corner of my brush. You'll notice that the paint is very not mixed. Yeah, now that now you you that that's a a painterly kind of. I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit more. You know, hold that brush just real still for a second so they can see. See, it's all like just oh, a hot yeah. mess. So every time I dab, I'm getting just some dispersant of color, aren't I? Oh yeah. Just dabbing here. Wipe off your brush. And just get some white paint on there, but you have it rinsed. And then you're going to just also dabble here. So just if for any reason, right here in the center, kind of coming out the little sparkles, you just want to make sure that this has a little sparkle feel to it. Just in case you don't have glitter. That's okay to not have glitter. Yeah. Glitter, not glittering is okay too. A lot of people don't like glitter. John doesn't realize this, but a lot of people don't like glitter. I'm not one of them. He's not one of them. But it's okay. I'm going to get just a little pure blue. Make sure I just got a little low light here. Now, one of the things that I like to do is outline my star. I'm going to get a small brush. I've got this nice angle. Oh, wait, no. I know it. I'm going to do a number two bright, my happy workhorse. Hmm. And I'm going to, I've got my fluid black out, and I'm going to put my fluid white out. Now, my fluid white's also good because that's what I'm going to do my lettering in with my detail brush. And you could do this with your detail, too. Yeah. Be sure and outline the outer edges of your star. In white. Gotcha. Now, there's some questions about gesso and some undercoating stuff here. Sure. So, it looks like we had a couple of questions from two different people where they're having trouble where there was a black marker had been on the canvas Ooh. and then they had gessoed over it and then painted over it. Yeah, it's going to bleed through. And it's been bleeding through. You need a sealer like GAC. Um, what you want is an isolation coat, something that seals what is under the canvas or on your surface. There's a thing called structural induced discoloration. Terrible name. Um, but what it basically means is stuff leaks up. Now, uh, if, 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 if I recall correctly, a primer is different than a sealer. A primer is completely different than a sealer. And, and that's, that, that potentially can be different than an isolation coat. Um, a no, sealer, a sealer and an isolation coat generally. Generally. Because a sealer same. can isolate. Right. That's and the an, thing. And not, an nothing. isolation coat can seal, but these are not varnish. Right. But they're not necessarily. Varnish is not an isolation coat. So, again, um, GAC 100 is the brand I'm familiar with. I think it's GAC 100. Is it GAC 200? There's too many GACs. There's, it's a GAC? I'm pretty sure it's GAC 100. You can go to the Golden YouTube channel and look up structural induced discoloration and they're going to show you how that works but basically and i talked about this in my varnish video where we talked about varnishing the 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 kind of correct way versus varnishing the just sort of varnish it way <laughs> like, so, and i show you just the sort of just get it varnished because i'm not really telling you how to keep your paint for restoration yeah right so you don't need an isolation coat an isolation coat seals your canvas and then you can apply varnish to it and remove the varnish Oh, interesting. All right. So that's why when varnishing, you would do an isolation coat. Um, but for the purposes, if you have a canvas that you want to use that has unknown stuff on it that you don't know how it's going to behave, yeah. isolate it 
then prime it, then create a ground or surface. Gotcha. It's very, very important. That's good to know. That's what, that's what, that clarifies a whole lot for, I think, several people out here. So I grab my Just Red, and I'm going to come and start redding up my shoes. Now, I'm using a crimson, so this is a deep, antiqued red. And I'm going to want to, you know, even though I'm glittering my shoes, right, I've got to still paint them because somebody else might not be glittering theirs. I'm grabbing a little, I'm going to darken my red with the ultramarine anytime I want to create a shadow. And I'm going to definitely want a shadow right here. This would be a dark area under the shoe. Maybe... We're going to need another little dark area where the two shoes are meeting. You might have put your feet further apart, but I got mine close together, so I layered them. Now, do you use an isolation coat? Uh, not unless I need it. I mean, gotcha. I use them when they're appropriate. <laughs> but oftentimes not. Um, it's not needed most times. It, I, if I had some weird thing underneath here... Mm -hmm. that I wasn't sure how it was going to behave, I would definitely use one if I was going to use this canvas and sell it to a collector. Oh, yeah. And I'm not creating artwork that I personally perceive as needing to withstand the test of time. <laughs> yeah. Know? So, I mean, if I'm wrong, future archivist, I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't call it. We thought it was going to be like velvet paintings. Yep. <laughs> Of course, somebody now has to figure out how to restore velvet paintings. So <laughs> that's funny in and of itself. I'm going to take a little of this red over to my yellow. And this is going to start to lighten up, be a little more orange, lighten up these shoes a little bit. We're going to create some highlights. And then we're going to start creating the effect that looks like they're made with sparkles because there's a way to paint that before you glitter it. And you should paint it before you glitter it. We got a little excited about the glitter earlier, but we've got to paint this in before we do that. I'm going to take a little of this highlight down the center of my heel, come back with some of my red. You could be using crimson, you could be using cad here, you're using CAD, it's going to be quite warm. Notice that I'm dabbing my, my brush, trying to create this feeling of sequins or texture. Can you guys see how I'm doing that? Yeah. Just dabbing my brush. I'm going to need to put a bow on. In a second. But I think that we're really, really going to glitter our bow. So, just going to do the same thing over here, kind of dabbing the paint. I haven't rinsed it. Just pulling this red, so there's this red base. The glitter is very, very powerful. And it really warms up these shoes. So, yeah, we're going to... It, there's a lot of different questions on isolation coats and things like that. So we'll probably have to do a, a whole quest on that. Probably. I can answer a couple while we're doing this part here. So uh, what, do you, what, what do you suggest using for an isolation coat? GAC 100. Gotcha. I mean, I can look it on my phone and check it, but I'm pretty sure it's GAC 100. Yeah. You can also just write uh, golden and ask them. I think everybody's, you could ask any paint company what their isolation coat mm -hmm. is they all have one gotcha it is not gloss medium and varnish so if you have a, a painting that already has some discoloration coming through from underneath is there any way to save that <sighs> seal it seal that little area seal it yeah and then repaint it seal that just that's try to yeah. just do that it's a touch it's up. a big thing it really messes up your artwork yep it's not easily fixed um it can ruin a good painting it's it's uh, why there's so much information out there on preventing it is because it can really damage a good painting. I'm using some yellow and some alizarin here, and I'm gonna come back and again hit the highlight on the heel. Oh, nice. Maybe come down here with a little highlight here. Okay, a little sparkly feeling. You know, um, 
Yeah, the reason that there's varnish and isolation coat and gesso is because they are very different products and they perform in very different ways. They're actually not trying to just get more money out of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I really, you know, would think that way about companies because so many companies just look for a way to make you spend money twice on the same thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I if there's a different product, it's because there's a reason. Yeah, generally speaking, there is definitely a reason. So I'm going to take some white in my red. And I'm going to add some of this sparkle to like some of this space, breaking it up. You can see I'm just dabbing this and just trying to create this feeling of sequins. We're not going to be, um, you know, glittering the shoe solidly, right? Some of it's going to be paint, some of it's going to be glitter, it's going to have a lot of texture. But you can see how if we do this, it gives that feeling of the shoe being glittery. Can we all see that feeling? Yes. These different highlights. If you go real light, then that starts to feel like, you know, the high reflection, see? Where the white mm -hmm. makes that. Maybe there's some of this right here and some of this right along the edge of her shoe. Now we need a shadow under her feet. Number one thing that messes with everybody when they're painting is not creating a shadow. So we're gonna pull some of the ultramarine and the alizarin. Did I like break everybody with the isolation coat thing? Oh no, no, that's really good. <laughs> No, that's really, really good. It's just how you fix that. Or if you were going to be working with something that um, was an unknown, like if I were painting on an old saw blade well, so or a rusted can, I would absolutely create an isolation coat or unidentified wood. I found an incredible piece of wood that I wanted to paint on. I would isolate where I was painting. Do you have any suggestion for sealing art journal pages so they don't stick together? Yes, but this is not my suggestion. I actually learned this from my art journal friends. There is a wax. It's a beeswax that is made for art journals, and you actually see cover. It's clear, and you cover the pages, and then they don't stick to each other through that whole multimedia thing. Isn't that cool? Ah, uh, somebody would yeah. be clever and figure that out. Yeah, uh, Mike Deacon is the YouTuber I like on the art journaling thing. I think May May Helms has some stuff. Uh, Melody, she's more cricket. Hmm. So Aaron says that. Oh, the oh, um. Rebecca Hay, tickle pink too. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, Aaron was saying that Liquid Tech says you can use varnish and medium to isolate coat as an isolation coat. They they're saying the varnish and medium. That there's that I guess Liquid Tech's. Uh, if I, I they say it, then it's true. So you have to go check that out. Read the container. It could be because you can't get that stuff off. I use it as a varnish. You can't get it off once it's down. Yeah, they may have a chemical process to remove it, making it an isolation coat. Well, no, an isolation coat cannot be removed. Oh. It creates a coat where, and I might have said that in my varnish video. Um, I thought varnish was removable. Varnish no. is removable, but an isolation coat is not. Right. The gloss medium and varnish is a very unique product in the market, sort of like the glazing liquid is a unique product on the market. Right. So it is what it is. Re yeah, if you read the labeling, trust the labeling. Okay. Generally, they have really proven whatever they're saying. So I'm coming here. You can see I'm creating this glazed shadow. You can see the bricks underneath, right? Now I'm going to pull out my small number two brush. I'm going to do a couple of interesting things. I'm going to load up on my number two bright some of my black paint. And right under the shoe, I'm going to make a line. And coming up around the toe of the shoe, I'm going to make a line. And inside the heel, and then inside the arch. This is grounding this object. Can you see how it's holding it down? Yeah. Make a line. You might need to make one between the two. Make a line. You could do this with a paint pen. Perfectly fine. And acceptable. Now I'm going to do my bows. So I'm going to make um, a little ball there. 
in my little bow shape right here because I want there to be a glitter bow. All right. A little bow going up here, disappearing behind my shoe. Maybe yours is showing all the way through. However it's tucked, that's fine. <laughs> if the top of it doesn't have red underneath it, uh, once this is dry, I'm going to flub it and do it right now. Actually, I can hit it with a hairdryer. We've got time. <laughs> John can chat with you. I can. So I'll say thank you guys for joining us. We've got a huge crowd of people here. We've got over, almost two, 300 people here. We've got over 200 people right here right now, 220, something like that. And at 292 likes, so thank you guys all for coming. I, I really, really appreciate it. I know there's been a lot of questions today. We kind of kind of wandered all over the place. We really love that you guys are all here hanging out and uh, really just totally, uh, it, it's every day. I'm grateful that we can come and do all this stuff with you guys. So, um, yeah, and I don't do really well when I get left alone not to <laughs> talk. Doesn't. so. Just. I am looking at my legs, and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So I'm going to come mix some skin tone again, a okay. darker skin tone. I'm going to get my glazing medium. And I'm going to make sure Oops. Let me scroll up here. that I have a nice little crisp line and a shadow here. Sometimes when I'm looking in the camera, I'll notice something where I'm like, oh, I don't like what that is. And that's okay to do. It's loud. Now, do we need to put always evaluate as you're painting? I think that we may have uh, added a little confusion here. Do you need an isolation coat to put down glitter? No, isolation coat has nothing to do with glitter. We were talking about seepage. Okay. <laughs> <gasps> you don't need anything to put down the glitter except a way to affix the glitter. The reason we were talking about an isolation coat is somebody had a mark on a canvas that was bleeding through their painting. Uh huh. And that's what those are about, is to prevent an unexpected, um, out of the blue kind of event where you get like a shadow or a ghost. Did you know that we are currently, oh, that's very loud. Oh, how loud that is. What'd you do? I put music on, it was super loud. Why don't do that to them? They're very nice. They're hanging because with us today. Because we are Sherpa. No, we're not Sherpa yeah, we today. Are. Yeah, we've got over 300 likes with us today. So oh my gosh, you guys are people, saints to be here. liking this today. Thank you. 307 Thank likes you right that. now. So thank you guys for all coming and being with us today. I'm going to all be got rid of the... And, and, and for being Oh, you all, get the goofy, goofy dance. And being all awkward today. You know, um, oh, look at that. I can't even push my buttons right. We are awkward today. Uh, see, the have, universe is out of alignment. For those of you that are now holistic painters as well as fans of the holistic detective, <laughs> you know what I mean. The stream is all frothy. Yeah. <gasps> and, and, you know, all the moderators are out here, you know, Lisa and Kim and Mona and all the guys here, they're doing their best just to try to keep me on track. And oh, I am just, I'm hanging on there just barely, barely, but, uh, you know. Thank I don't know if guys. anyone can see this, though, because this just made this leg a lot better. This leg was making me mental. Now i got to make this other leg a lot better. But see, sometimes you just got to check. Just got to check it. I love my glazing medium. Get the glazing liquid if you can. They have it at Where Michael's. are you? There you are. I'm going to also just fix this back leg. I just didn't like that. Didn't like it, John. Didn't like didn't it at like all. It. Didn't look nice like the first one, and I don't like that when that happens. And so, so Gail asks, my, my, uh, Gail asks, John, doesn't cinnamon ever push your buttons? No. Uh, never. I never, would say ever. yes, of course I do, never, Gail. Never. I am an annoying person. Never, never. Who chats all the time. I talk nonstop, even after you guys leave, I'm like a magpie. We just talk to each other, though. It's, I mean, like, so what you're getting. But he puts earphones on, and that way he doesn't have to hear it. That's not true. Actually, we just. It's totally true. We do this when you're painting in the studio, though. We do do this when I'm painting, which is always now. Which, well, I mean, like, except it's much better now because there's like over 200 of our friends hanging out with us yeah. now. So, uh. True that. True, <laughs> true that. So you can see I've just sort of improved. Don't the legs look better? I like it. Oh, so much better. That was freaking me out. I was like, oh, I'm not loving that. And it's okay to let this dry anyways for glitter. All right. So what you got there? I am going to 
pull out a little red and yellow and just make sure that this has a has oh. a base in it. I'm just, I'm just there we go. Oh. It'll help the red glitter. So the trick with glitter is when you paint underneath it, it creates a depth of color. Ah, we that's... are we have one last painting thing to do, but we can do it on our glitter page. So I'm gonna pull this out. This is palette paper by Strathmore. I get this at Michael's. Okay. Here's a fun thing. So you can smush it. You can smush it. Smush it. Why are you? What are you doing? Because then you get this. <gasps> oh yeah. And then if you want, um, you can cut pieces of that out and like affix them to other projects or collages or things. Oh, neat. Just saying. Just a little thing to do there. Little thing to do and put this aside where I don't step into it, because there's nothing as awkward as stepping in your palette paper and you have like two sheets of palette paper affixed to your shoes. Yeah. I'm gonna put a little more white paint out. Because that happens all the time. All the time. It does to me. Anyways, mm. I don't know about you, but to me for sure. So Tammy was And I'm gonna write you had the power all along here oh. and then I'm gonna glitter. If I don't hand write it out first, um I'm gonna misspell something. Actually that could still happen. So we still have live. all the screen. So you guys got... could see how bad I spell. Yeah. So actually there's a couple people who are asking about this. Uh and and Tammy was the last one here. But uh do 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 uh where did, I'm going to make sure I got my, my scrolled up here so you got that. Uh, so she was asking, do we, would we consider selling DVDs? Because there are some people in, in other countries that don't have good internet that would like to have more of our lessons. And so what I would say is go ahead and check out the artsherpa.com. We've done some DVDs in the past, but we didn't have a huge response for, uh, from them. And we we're may bad at getting them out. Well, and, and they're just complicated to do. So, with our with our website, we have we may have some technology to allow you guys to uh, download to download those. So we're kind of looking into that directly, so that you know people in in other countries or with bad internet could you know download an episode or two. But that's that's still coming. So give us a little time on that. But if you're interested in that, definitely go sign up at theartsherpa.com and. Uh, you know, you can message me there. You can find us where it's uh, you get an account there where you can upload pictures and you can message other community members. And we keep the chat going after the show, uh, which is another great reason to go check out theartsherpa.com. Right? Yep. Yeah. As I'm just sort of like going, what are all the reasons to go? And there's a lot. Yep. Yep. Also, some painting happened while and, you were talking. And, 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 you're, and I'm watching you paint. <laughs> Um, for just... those of you that were probably having the question of like what I'm doing, I've got a three over zero brush and I'm using a fluid paint. I used graphite pencil to sketch it in because that's just what I have up here because I didn't grab my white chalk. So it's a problem. <laughs> but it won't be a problem with you because you guys will use white chalk. Yeah. Let's hope that I... Now they're wondering how long you, you think you'll be leaving those brushes in that... Uh... I'm already there. wrong. Listen, don't do as I do. You should have less water in your cup. You should wipe your brush, rinse them and wipe them and leave them to the side on little rests. Uh -huh. You should do all that. And it, if you do those things, you, your brushes will last so much longer. And we're just mean to our brushes. I'm just me. This is the reality of what happens. So those brushes. I, these are all really good brushes, though, so they won't pop. <laughs> Really good brushes won't pop as often. You can still pop them though. Mm -hmm. I haven't met a brush I can't pop. Some things just take a take a lot longer. So I'm putting the quote that means a lot to me mm -hmm. on the canvas. You can put the words or no words that mean something to you. I think lettering is best with two coats of paint. Well, this is definitely resonating with Colleen. She loves this. The, the wording? The wording, yeah. Words on canvas are powerful. An artist I love, Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, used to put words on canvas and cross them out so that we paid attention to them more. Mm -hmm. It's a graffiti artist in New York. And throughout the history of art, combining imagery with words makes intense emotive experiences for the viewer and for the painter mm. i think this is one of the wonderful things about art journaling oh i got my art journaling recommendation 
So you like did? Uh, for sure, Jane Davenport and Tamara Laporte. Oh yeah. Of Ever After um, and Life Book and Jane Davenport. Yeah, those are really good. Mm-hmm. Really good. Oh, I was not on point there for a second. <laughs> All right. Be like saying, there's some guy that swims, uh, but I don't remember his name. <laughs> but there's that other guy, Greg Luganis, and really you're supposed to be saying Michael Phelps, and mm-hmm. you're just like, oh. All right, so I have all this in. Do you do? I do, and now I'm going to put out a little soft gel. This is how I'm going to affix my glitter to the canvas. I see. Right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to close some things up because I may put things. There's a couple ways to do this if you want heavy glitter or light glitter. If you spend a lot of time being very careful painting your shoes, don't pay attention. I didn't do that. It's very wasteful. What do you th- spend a lot of time uh-huh. painting your shoes. You might want to leave a lot of that paint work out. I'm just pulling this little knife to get the gloss out. I'm going to just put a little of this gel out. This is not the same as PVA glue. PVA glue and soft gel are not the same. Okay. They look similar. This is going to dry clear and glossy and not impact the glitter at all. has no, no clout. What brush were you just using there? Oh. No, no, no. Before that. The, you were, when, you were, when you were white lining? Oh, when I was lining? Oh, this is really cool. I'm actually really liking this one. Someone was just asking, what brush yeah. were you using? I would recommend this brush right now. I'll tell you right now. This is a Sterling Studio Round 3 over 0. Okay. Has a, and it's just really nice. Hmm. And I put it through a lot of stuff so far, and it's hanging in with me, so I'm kind of impressed. Cool. Yeah. So there's a couple ways I can do this. I can put out some glitter. This is Reflections Micro Glitter, right? A little pile there. Little pile of glitter. And I can put a little pile of my bling out. You'll notice that both of these are hollow. So Annette wanted to just, so let me give a little shout out to Annette. She's watched a lot of our videos. Has she? Yeah, and she says she would like to know, do you paint the sides? Uh, not on thin stretchers. Not on thin stre- on thick stretchers? On thick stretchers, real real gallery wrap cam- uh, stretchers, I will paint the sides. Um, if If it's just, I would normally say frame. But some of you guys are 45, 30 paintings in, and even work in garage sales yeah. and Hobby Lobby sales, it would still be really daunting to frame all that work. If you have that going on, go ahead and paint the sides. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. It's not going to get you kicked out of the art club by any means. If you're doing, you know, a few, like less paintings and you're going to want to showcase that, These are 16 by 20, and you should be able to frame these really easily, and that would be my recommendation. Yeah. Kim is 75 paintings in. See? It's just not reasonable for you to frame. Paint your sides. (laughs) (laughs) Paint your sides. No shade to side painting. I'm cleaning up my brush at all. No shade. I'm going to take some of my soft gel. If you're a person who doesn't like glitter to be places it's not supposed to be, this is your application method. And you're just going to brush, apply the glitter directly. Oh, neat. If that's who you are, and you just, I've done a lovely job painting. I just want this to look how it's supposed to look. Use your brush to brush on the glitter. Now, how does this come out of the paint? Or out, out of that? Uh, the brush? The brush. It doesn't cleaning. impact the brush at all. So this comes, this will come right out? Right off. Oh. Right out. Because the soft gel, right? Oh, nice. And this method, as long as you don't let it exit your space that you're working from, does keep you from having that weird fleck of glitter on your cheek (laughs) that shows up later. I don't know. Think of this as the hazmat suit (laughs) and containment room of glitter production. And I just wanted to show you that there was this alternate way, and you will still have shiny glitter. It will still feel like glitter. Now, the, the medium you're using here again? Soft gel. Soft gel. It's not going to impact the glitter. It's not going to reduce the shine. And believe it or not, guys, this is, this is a perfectly approved art method. By the way, if you wanted to have this in your art journal, this would be how I'd put that down because it's not going to flake glitter into your art journal. Nice. The glitter that is contained into the soft gel shall remain in the soft gel. Yeah. If you if you go back and put glitter on the top, 
it is one of those things that every time you touch it, it it sprinkles. It does. It's sparklier. It's, it a is A little sparklier. bit sparklier. It's also sheddier. Sheddier. So much sheddier. It's more glittery. It and shares And when this glitter. dries, it's going to be shiny. Yeah. And then you can even get this on the brush like this. See, I'm dabbing both sides. Mm-hmm. And come and apply it in a dabbing method, too. Oh, Still nice. contained. Still contained. Glitter containment is important. Right? Your glitter will not photograph for your social media no matter what you do. <laughs> Just saying. You can have LED lights from directions. It is as, it's as hard to photograph glitter as it is to photograph black light. Right. Now, so, so just realize that you just the awesomeness of what you're about to do only you may know. Now, I just want to make sure some 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 clear in here. Okay. So you're not using PVA glue, are you? No. This is not glue. Not this white glue. This is not glue. This is my soft body gel in gloss. So this is a gloss gel. Soft body gel. Soft body gloss. gel. The reason it's soft body is it will self level. Uh huh. Right. So I'm not going to be dealing with the refraction of the brush stroke. And the reason it's gloss is because it's going to shine. It, this particular product will dry crystal clear. Gotcha. As close to being um, a resin dry as you can be without being a resin. Now, if you, sp if, if you spray varnish the glitter, it doesn't flake off as much, does it? No, okay. not as much. It will still flake off a little bit, but not as much. I'm going to brush glitter the shoes, and then I'm going to show you how to drop glitter the bow. Drop glitter? Oh. Right? So you have two textures of glitter. All right. Right? So I've got my soft body gel here. I'm getting my red. You want to pull that down a little bit so people, because you, you, you're way up around the canvas. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. I, I, I actually thought I was the right direction. You're good. You're good. You are All right, wrong. So you can see how that's sort of loaded on my brush. It's like a little scoopy shovel. And I'm going to just brush this on. And this is absolutely adding rubiness to my shoes. Gotcha. I'm rubying my shoes. And it layers really interestingly with the painting underneath. Do you have any other suggestion for if you don't have soft gel? Well, um, gloss medium and varnish. Any of the clear? Any of the gloss. Like gloss medium and varnish would probably work. A heavy body gel would work. Uh, mm, this will dry slowly, but since it's a glaze, it'll work. Liquitex glazing medium would probably work really well. And look, you can do the methods that we have in the iCard where you put down glue, sprinkle the glitter, and then seal it with a varnish. Yeah. And then that's PVA glue. And that's PVA glue. So, I mean, I'm not going to turn you in if you use PVA glue. The issue with PVA glue and Mod Podge, both, which is why we don't add them to our paint as a medium, is that they're very, very sensitive to moisture in the air. And everything about your acrylic engineering is about getting it to be less sensitive to moisture in the air. Gotcha. So when you add something like PVA glue back into it or Mod Podge to extend or seal, you're actually creating something that will become even tackier and stickier and soft. Oh. Which you don't want. No, you do not want that. No, like we're almost done, guys. It is coming right along. We are almost done. And we were chatty today and still almost done. Lord, we needed it. How's everybody doing? I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm glittering like I'm on some sort of glitter train. <laughs> you're on you're on you're on the train to glitter town. I have kombucha. That's what it is. It is. You're on you're on uh, the, the the express train to glitter town. The express train, but yeah, I don't know if you can can the up close oh, camera yeah. see the glitter. Oh you can see it in both and, ways. You can see it there okay. and you can up oh, and here. Yeah. It will continue to hide glitter as it dries. Yeah. Right? If I was putting this in like a baby room or a small child's room, I would definitely want to do the soft child style of glittering because my littlest, she scrapes on it. Mm -hmm. She's going to de-glitter a painting if she's left alone with any of the flaked on glitters. Yeah. She's going to go, all this glitter will be on the floor. You don't want that in your kid's room. So definitely do the um, gel finish because then you're like, oh, my glitter is down. So they can do it. scrape, 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 scrape. Mm -hmm. Hit a varnish on top of that. That glitter's down. 
<laughs> that glitter is contained. You may not know where all the other glitter is. It's like a zombie apocalypse that you know you have managed. Yes. Exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? No, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Angela Anderson's all stuck because I got stuck into Walking Dead or something happened somehow. Or maybe her son did it. She got stuck into Walking Dead, too. Mm. So now there's so many zombie references across everybody's channel. I'm wondering what happened. Just making Mark happy. I'm sure it's making Mark happy. Mark makes everybody else happy. Yes. Mark makes everybody else happy. So I'm just, you know, doing this style of glitter. just want to show you this kind. It's a good kind. Good way. Doesn't mean the other way wasn't a good way. You got to find your own way. You can see this is like like where it gets stuck on my palette. It's stuck on my palette. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And no, my brush is not harmed, and all the glitter will come out of it. That's that's the interesting part to me. Is it? Yeah. It's because the soft gel. Soft gel is my favorite multimedia gel. If you're doing uh, collaging, if you're doing any of those multimedia effects that you would use any of the other products, I really like soft gel. Yeah. It is amazing stuff. Like for your wrinkle-free application process. And just moving my glitter because I want my, my, my slippers need to be ruby. But, you know, of course, I'm going to show you both methods, right, mm -hmm. that you could have. The, uh, the contained and the uncontained. To show you that, I've got to get the tack out of the soft gel. And we're almost to that second method. Nice. Okay? Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer real fast. Okay. Okay. So, while she's doing that, I get to say, hey, guys. And I have to say... It has been really cool to see everybody out here hanging out today. There's been lots and lots of glitter talk and lots top. I, so I just have to say thank you. I appreciate it. And please post up your pictures. I want to see all the glitter shoes and all of your takes on this posted up. And um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. You know, and post up the, and again, post up the pictures on our YouTube page, on our, say, on our Facebook page, on the Instagram, and the uh twitter we have a bunch of those yeah i think twitter and <laughs> so uh post those all up there i love to see them and don't forget to come out to the art sherpa.com as well now i'm gonna apply just a th a coat of soft gel to where my bow is right and a little bit in the button here you may have to go back with some black paint if now, you make a boo-boo with your soft gel have you found that the brand of glitter matters yeah it does huh yeah What what's the differences Dude, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna say check Lindsay's channel to the, get the exact specs. But I think that there's a whole thing with the qualo of the ho quality of the hollow in the glitter. All the Christine fans are like, yes, the quality of the hollow, the cut of the glitter. The I think the dye lots and materials. Boy, there's that antique glitter. It gets serious on glitter. Huh. I'm gonna move this over here so I don't have an exciting moment. I don't want on camera. <laughs> Well, you're gone. We just have lost you. Where the Sherpa No, go? you still want, you want to lose me for this reason. Because remember that time when I was like, I set fire to the key. And it was all crazy. So I put the soft gel here. And I'm going to do an over application process. This is where I sprinkle the glitter onto where the glue or gel is heavily. Then I'm going to... That's kind of actually what I was going to do. I'm going to tap, 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 tap. And you can see that those, and I will just brush off this extra glitter. See, now my glitter, now you can see the difference, though. Glitter is everywhere. <laughs> yep. Glitter is everywhere, but you can see the kind of application you would get for the sprinkle on. Yeah, so it, it, it's really interesting. The, the When you... When you painted it on, it looks more painterly. And then mm -hmm. when you sprinkled it on, it looks more pop arty. Yep. That's really interesting. Because life be like that. Life like is like a box of glitter. Recollections glitter in the 26 pack. 
<laughs> it's gonna oh, get I'm everywhere. I'm gonna get kicked off of YouTube for being silly. I I don't think we can like. I think there's a whole lot of trailblazers for us. That Are have, there? That have made sure that silly on YouTube has been covered to the point where we can't be kicked off. What are you doing? I'm trying to get an angle on this that doesn't bug me because I don't like working real low. Oh, you, hold on and. Let me come adjust that canvas for you. What are you? What are no, you it's doing? okay. Oh. I'm just signing. Ah, I see what you're doing. I'm just signing. We've kidnapped everybody for a lot longer than I planned to. I, th I don't I'm sure they needed They're it. They're all here. They they were all. Everyone's just been hanging out. <laughs> everybody <laughs> needs the break today. Yeah. I'm signing down here. I like to find interesting places to sign that don't detract from the painting. Oh, I had a. Uh, a question was brought up to me today, uh, today, and actually the last couple of days, about dating the canvas. Oh, yeah. And I kept saying I was going to answer it. And I kept saying I was going to answer it, and I keep not answering it, so I'm going to answer it. Okay. Dating the canvas. And this is super simple. I don't know why everybody's going to make it crazy complicated. If you are in business, if you will be selling your art at a craft fair, at your local church craft fair, if you're going to go with a tent and go across the country, if you're going to be going to a gallery, online, Etsy, anywhere commercial, for say even 10% of your collection, let's just say it's 10% that you're going to sell, yeah. not to friends and family, but to some people like you don't know, mm -hmm. do not for any reason date your canvas. Why? Because there is an oh, absolute button. perception among collectors and galleries that old work that hasn't moved is of less value. You will be losing an ever exponentially amount of money. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a weird thing. It's just a true thing. Yes, my mom. Ask any artist that's out there. Like, just walk up to an artist in craft fields and they'll be like, "Don't do it. Don't do it." It's like anyone who's like been through the mill and they're like, "Oh, that's like, it's like feeding trolls. Just don't do it." Mm. Now, however, say you're not going to be selling your artwork. Say that you are on a personal art journey. And you've begun this and you want to have a sense of how things have changed. And you're not going to be selling. Feel free to date. <laughs> the art police are not allowed in your house. No. no. You may run into the art police in public venues mm. because they're allowed outside, I've found. I can't seem they to get... They any roam, legislation to get them they contained. They roam freely, just on their own. We can't they stop do. Them. They're allowed to just be anywhere they want, saying anything they want. All kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> but think about it. I mean, if you just step back logically. I'm a commercial artist. I need to sell. I don't want to lose some money just because I dated artwork. Right? Yeah. Even though it doesn't really matter. But it does if you want to make any money. Mm -hmm. Then don't date. That right? makes you, sense. Can, you just keep a record. What you do is you just keep a file yeah. of creation that's called Providence. Because you're all <laughs> professional. See? you professional. You've got Providence. If you are at a personal archery and you want to see how the last 10 years went, feel free to date. Nobody can tell you nothing. And if some crazy out-of-body professional artist wanders into your house, sometimes they do. They wander in off the street and is like, gosh, you really shouldn't date your work. Um, just let them have their moment. They're having a moment. They're having a moment. Because you got to be present to what you're doing with your artwork. Yeah. It's your journey, not theirs. Yeah. I don't, if I, if I take up glass bead blowing, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about what Chihuly did. You he has a different inspired, set of problems than me. But yeah, that's a whole, yeah. <sighs> right? Just yeah. Know where you just, are. wow. So I, I know several people were having feels on that, and I hope that makes it just real simple. So you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not really selling, so I can just, I want to know how 1975 looks versus 1985, mm -hmm. right? You want to know that. It's awesome. But if you're like, eh, I'm going to be selling some of this stuff, keep mm -hmm. a providence. Keep a file. Yes. So simple, right? Yeah. I so love making it simple. I'm sure that's going to be a pro tip later, but I just, because that, I kept saying I was going to really answer good. that, that's but I kept really not good. doing it. Chris, Christy says that she, she dated wine once, but she had to make sure it was 18 years old. So. <laughs> she dated wine once. <laughs> 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 she made sure it was 18 years old. Oh, and the other one I didn't answer that I meant to answer and I kept meaning to answer is that if you have soft bodied paint like this mm -hmm. and you want to make it heavy bodied, all you have to do is add heavy body gel. Okay. I don't know that they're here at the end of a video, so I'm probably oh, no, still going to have to hand write those back, you to but go, I did it Dominique, so I can be like, I did answer it in a video. Dominique says, can you glitter up the whole thing so we don't have to leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You guys, there's going to be, uh, my mom's on later, mm -hmm. Ginger Cook Live, and Angela is on later, and she, I think she's got horns with flowers. Oh. They look very peaceful. That looks, looks very good. relaxing. And you know what? The what? chat's still going over at theartshirt.com because YouTube's going to kick you out in 20 minutes or so after the video, but we never will. That's right. I... Our door is perpetual. We're like that house that has all the kids in it. The art They never go home. That's right. We have a live chat going there. You can just go and hang out. We'd love to have you. You know? I got to keep working on the never-ending door. And we're going we're gonna to go work on that door. <laughs> so we love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Have a beautiful day. Remember, everything's okay. I know it, I feel the anxiety. You probably feel it, but it's it's going to be okay because they can't take our Michaels away. No. None of this results in Michaels or craft stores or Jerry's or any of our art supplies going away, so we're okay. So we can just go paint. Love you guys. Bye.